the events of this past week have shown us true evil and weakness. In the slaying of George Floyd, we see evil, oppression against people of color, epitomized in that very event. Unfortunately, our nation has a long history of such oppression. And even though there have been changes throughout the decades, such evil still exists. We long for a better society. Not only that, we see that in this desire for a better society, anger then turns to violence. And it shows the limits of what we are able to do. We may be able to be opportunistic or manipulative or to demonstrate our frustration, but yet in our own strength, we are unable to affect perfect and lasting transformation. In the midst of this, we need to be reminded of who God is and what he's done for us. In the gospel, Jesus has come, God in the flesh, and he too was a victim of oppression, oppressed by the very people that should have championed him as king. And he came and he died in order that he might redeem a people for himself, a people not deserving of this redemption, but loved nonetheless. And for those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that have been transformed by the gospel, I have some words. I may not be able to say much in the way of public policy or, or things of that nature. I'll leave that to other people. But I will share some things about who God is and what that means for us. First of all, we need to remember the truth. Darwinism tells us that might makes right, and if we're able, we can do it. Morality is thrown out the window. Um, this leads to, to oppression and exploitation. Materialism leads us to eugenics, and there are, there are fitter families and, and better people. But we see that greed leads us to, to slavery. To, to economic inequalities, to robbing our neighbors under the cloak of policy. No, we need real truth, truth found in God's word. And Jesus came and he gave us truth. And, and we're reminded in this truth that, that God opposes the oppressor and delivers the oppressed. In Amos chapter five, Verses 21 through 24 says this, I hate, I despise your feasts. I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings you, of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs and the melody of your harps. I will not listen, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. We are reminded of, of God's plan and purpose, that there is a place where there's no more evil, no more crying, no more tears, no more oppression, no more exploitation. We are reminded that people are created in God's image. And so therefore, um, we oppose racism and, and tribalism that just simply seeks an advantage off of the backs and necks of others. We were reminded that God loved us even when we were unloving, lovely. And that enables us to love people even when they disagree, even when they oppose, that we are to show grace and kindness. Which leads us to the second thing, that we should be characterized by love. 1 John 4.19 tells us that we love because he first loved us. And so therefore, uh, as believers, we should be characterized by love. And in fact, as believers, we have a special opportunity to be a city set on a hill, to be a light in such a broken world. In that, the deepest thing about us is that we are God's people. We know him and he knows us. That we are rescued and redeemed in order to be called his and so therefore, we have brothers and sisters in Christ 
a, a deeper foundation than, than simple DNA or geography or ethnicity or culture. And that enables us to love others, even though we may be different economically, we may be different in age, we may be different in ethnicity. We have something truer about us. And so as God's people, we need to, to link arms with, with others that are different from us, to show love, to show care, to show real compassion and concern, to listen and to listen well. John Perkins, an African-American believer that turns 90 this year, uh, the founder of The Voice of Calvary and Mendenhall Ministries, who's been working for racon racial reconciliation in Mississippi for years, shares this point. He said, I was seeing more clearly than ever how important it was for Christians to be the people of God. And lastly, we need to show radical hospitality. We need to be men and women that are concerned about others, even if it puts us in uncomfortable situations. We often do what is simply popular, what goes with the flow, what ruffles the fewest feathers. But instead, we should be men and women that, that are eager to welcome in others, to sit across from a table and have a hard conversation, to rest in the truth, to delight in the light, to seek transformation, to quite simply make a new friend. We, we want to show our graciousness, maybe maybe visiting a new neighborhood or, or having someone over that, that we might not have thought of before, but now suddenly God is placing in our lives. There is much we need to do. Here at Ankeny Free, we've been walking through the lament, and it seems so appropriate for us to cry out to the Lord, how long, how long do we need to dwell in a world of injustice and pain? And so we wait, we wait on the Lord, knowing his justice is perfect and that there'll be a time when none of this evil will even be present before us. But in this day and age, we rest in his power, doing good by his grace.